Everybody and welcome to another episode of the Honest Podcast. Today we have Eric, the Executive Coordinator for the Lake Region Conference, Frank, the Area Coordinator of the Lake Region Conference, and we have Winston, who was a very active Pathfinder, now inactive, and hopefully going to come back. Right? <laughs> we shall see. We shall see that. No, no, you gotta come back, man. You gotta come back. Okay, so first, I wanted to ask you guys what is one of the few most embarrassing memories you can think of when you were a Pathfinder? Ooh. <laughs> um, hmm, okay, I got, I got a crazy one. Uh, we were, it was at Camp Wagner, and it was during camp meeting. And I guess this had to have been like one something or something in the morning. So, you know, you're half asleep already. So I was, I was uh, getting up to go to the bathroom, and I'm totally out of it, and I couldn't find my glasses. <laughs> so... I'm out there at the Villa Camp Wagner hollering like, where are my glasses? <laughs> Forgetting that I put all of that stuff in my shoes, knowing that I'll be able to grab them when, I, when I'm able to get up and get out and go. And I think, I think that was probably one of the most embarrassing things because it woke up like half the camp. <laughs> uh, for me, uh, it was when I was a director and we had one kid who had his Pathfinder world patch upside down on his shirt. And I, uh, the conference youth director was going to inspect our club. So I was like, I was like, I was all excited, but I was also nervous. I was like, I was like, everybody be on your best behavior. And I taught my Pathfinders to sound off whenever they're asked a question. So so the youth director is asking this kid who has his patch upside down. He goes, how are you doing today? And he's like, good, sir. And, he, and he's like, um, and then he goes, uh, are you ready for this inspection? He goes, yes, sir. And then he's like, you know, you have your world patch upside down. And he's like, hey. and I was like, oh, no. <laughs> and that was that that that's 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 a story that I still talk about to this day to this day with uh people what about uh, for, for me it was uh again a lot of my i guess embarrassing stories who come from when I was an actual pathfinder um I think I was about fifteen or sixteen, and we were doing the um swimming honor at a YMCA in the area and everybody was I think we had just finished wrapping up and we were allowed to like play in the pool and I pushed one of the girls into the pool because that was going to be funny and so she fell in the pool and she got really angry I guess she didn't want her hair to get wet uh, so I'm there like laughing and she climbs out and my back is to her, and like she kicks me square in the nuts. Oh man! And I'm again. I'm like 15, 16, and like I I drop to the ground, and like I start crying, and all my, <laughs> all my friends start laughing at me because I was crying. <laughs> um, but I couldn't help it. I don't know why I was crying. It just hit so bad. You know why? <laughs> so. Uh, um, <laughs> That's a fair reaction. That was, that, that was pretty <laughs> embarrassing, I would say. That was that was pretty embarrassing. <laughs> uh, okay, so then we got Stefan Waits, who's a deputy director and a TLT assistant area coordinator from the South Central it's Conference Coordinator. Conference. Oh my bad. Excuse me. I am sorry. Yeah, they don't have they don't area coordinators. Oh. <laughs> 
What is the question? Yeah, it's different, Don. I told you everything is different in the South. <laughs> uh, what's your most embarrassing story from when you were a Pathfinder? Embarrassing story from Pathfinders? Uh, I was a pretty legit dope Pathfinder, so I don't really remember too, <laughs> too many embarrassing stories. I, I probably, you know what? Actually, I do have one. I was, um, it was doing a camp meeting. And we had uh, like a little talent show, I guess they were doing, or like a skit, some something, some skit we were doing. And my younger Pathfinder, I was a TLT at the time, and the younger Pathfinders were putting on the show. And the whole point, I'm still mad about this day, the whole point of the skit was to be comical, but yet informative. So my director didn't really, she didn't like that we were laughing. Well, really, she didn't like that I was laughing. So I was just, you know, kind of chuckling at it. And then it was a funny part. One of my pathfinders said something funny in the skit. And I started laughing. She picks up a Bible and, like, smacks me in the back with it in front of everybody in camp me in the delivery center. And we're in the front. And drags me out of the, of the gym. And, like... <laughs> like proceeded to just go off with me in the hallway. So that was probably the most embarrassing thing. And then after I come back, everybody in other clubs from all over the Lake Region Conference looking at me, laughing at me and stuff. And I'm like, why don't you go hit them with a Bible? You know, like, I'm the one getting laughed at. So that was probably the, it wasn't, that was probably the most uh, embarrassing thing. I don't really have any other than that. That, that, was, that one, I'm still kind of mad at to this day. <laughs> Uh, I remember my uh, my embarrassing one was the first my first outing as a pathfinder. I had went camping for the very first time in my life, and I sat too close to the fire, and my shoe caught on fire. <laughs> yeah, that's a that's a common one. I actually yeah I had a pathfinder who I, it was cold though, and we were standing around the fire, and I guess she didn't realize how she was on fire. <laughs> Uh. Um, what's one of the best memories that you will carry out through your life with you from Pathfinders? Hmm. Best memory. You want to go first, Stefan? Uh, yeah, I can go first. Um, best memory? Mm-hmm. I have actually two, I'll say. The, the when I got inducted as a TOT at 13 and nobody else did, I think that was a really good memory because normally you're supposed to be a freshman and uh, or, uh, or at least 14 years old. And I was one of the first people to do that. I think that was a good one. Uh, at camp meeting, in hot sun, on a Sabbath, <laughs> I remember that day. Um, and probably the first time I went to Oshkosh, because it was the first year I became a Pathfinder. And uh, it was the first one at Oshkosh, I think. It was 99. I think that will be one that I'll probably remember forever. Even though it was terrible weather, it was still fun. Um, what about you, Eric? Oh wow, Oshkosh has so many of them, uh, and camps, yeah. camps, camps always have them. Uh, you always get good ones from camp. Uh, yeah. But for me, it's, uh, whew, it's. Uh, I would say, when, let's just say drill competition. <laughs> I'll say that <laughs> because I'm I'm a drilling and marching guy. So watching my kids uh, compete in drilling and marching. And doing really well. Uh, something I'll always remember. I love that. You, uh, you, you took mine, Eric, man. <laughs> <laughs> I was I was gonna say this past uh, Oshkosh, when um, my club, I I trained them, but I allowed the one of the TLTs to command. Um, so I was just standing by looking at them, and they. They they 
came they came first place for um, basic drill. I think that was one of the proudest oh, moments yeah, I've ever experienced. Yeah, I remember that. Yeah. Um, and I was, I was proud because I didn't participate, you know, like they didn't depend on me. Um, it was solely their training. Um, so, yeah, that was a really proud moment in pathfinding for me. Winston, do you have one? Well, Oshkosh, of course, is always just littered with with them. But I know, I know some some might not agree with me on this one. But I always did enjoy the the Memorial Day parades. Oh my gosh, why? <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh, I hated those. You're on your own there, buddy. <laughs> yeah, bro. Come on, bro. I really? <laughs> I didn't mind them. All I remember is sweat and, yes. and tired feet. <laughs> Bro, it was unnecessary. Like, <laughs> it was always, it will be the hottest day of May for no reason. And we march. Multiple on people want to faint. <laughs> right, on a random, everybody, all the Pathfinders, I feel like all the Pathfinders in Mother City acted like they forgot how to be Pathfinders on that day. It was always bad. Like, it's just like, why are we going to mind so much? Why are we got to do this? Like, no, you we do this all year. <laughs> what was Hello. funny was that a lot of the master guides were struggling because of the uniforms were just so yes. hot. Yes. Yeah. People were, like, getting heat strokes and stuff. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah, yes. Uh, those were pretty bad. Uh, but memorable, yeah, but bad. <laughs> Uh, I remember the first uh, Mar Martin Luther King parade that we actually did where we were drumming and I was playing the cymbals and at one point my hands froze and I couldn't play anymore and I'm like and I wanted to scream too and nothing was coming up. I'm like no somebody help me because I really couldn't move my hands it was just stuck like this I'm like uh <sighs> yeah I refuse to go to those parades in February in January in Michigan I'm like I'm not doing that it's just cold. <laughs> Like, I don't know. I, I love freedom, too, but that's too cold, bro. I will say my recent memory that I have to mention this is that going to Oshkosh for the first time outside of Lake Region. That was this past one. That I will probably, I will never forget that either. It was just so different to be in a whole other conference camp and to experience with another conference and their customs and their Pathfinder culture. It was pretty, and then actually seeing Lake Region for the first time truly outside of Lake Region, it was pretty interesting to see. I would, I would definitely say that was some, that's something I would, that was stick with me. Well, my last question for you guys would be, what's your opinion on the importance of Pathfinder Ministry and why it's entirely different from all other ministries? Whew. Can I go first on that one? Yeah, that's a All right. So, so listen, uh, <laughs> I, I don't want to take too much, but to the importance of Pathfinder ministry is, is, is astounding. It is, a, it is astro, it's astronomical, the importance of Pathfinder ministry. I mean, even Lake Region Conference's own Dr. Jones said the first verses he memorized in, in learning the Bible was in Pathfinder ministry. It is it is one of the most able ministries to evangelize to the entire family in the community. We, we, we take children, we discipline them. I mean, you'll find people who are former Pathfinders or inactive Pathfinders, I should say, and they have, like we've been talking, memories, memories, Oshkosh memories. You bring them to Oshkosh once, I mean, you can change their life. They, they, they will be introduced to Jesus. They'll be excited for the Lord. I mean, Pathfinder ministry, I have seen it so many, so many, so many times. And when a church says, oh, we don't have Pathfinder children, or oh, why should we have a Pathfinder club? We, it'll be too much work. I'm like, you guys are missing out. You guys are missing out how to evangelize. You guys are missing out how to discipline your kids. You're missing out how to educate them. Um, as a Seventh-day Adventist, as a Christian, I mean, Pathfinder ministry, man, it, it's my job and I'm not paid for it and I'll always support it because it changes lives. It changes lives. And every church, every 
place every conference need to have pathfinders i mean especially in north american division we don't really emphasize it as much as other places other conferences because listen there's two things you can find anywhere in the world coca-cola and pathfinders that's very true that's very true is that true um I would like to go next. I think the thing that sticks out for me with Pathfinders is that it is the single most effective way to train a young person to be ready for life. Period. Um, I, I... I remember telling my Pathfinders maybe like four or five years ago that because at that time, a lot of them were skipping Pathfinders to play sports and, you know, just do other things, right, in, in school. And I was telling them, what do you think will get you into college? All the community service that you've done, all of the experience you have in leadership as a TLT, all the all this public speaking you get to do, you think you think playing intramural sports will get you into college, or you think Pathfinder related stuff will get you into path, uh, college? And sure enough, four or five years later, all of them are getting into college because they have. That's what they're putting down on the on the you know the applications. That's what they write in the essays about is the experience as a pathfinder. I mean it teaches you how to interact with people, all kinds of different people, and that is necessary when you're in a workplace. Um, when it's time to speak, uh, I'm an engineer, and a lot of the guys I work with, you know you can see that they get nervous and they get afraid when it's time to do a presentation. I don't really have that problem um, because as a pathfinder, I was required, I was in AY a lot as well. So I was required to lead out, do song service, do vespers, do the prayer, do the scripture reading. You're up in front all the time. So that's, that's one of the things I would say about Pathfinders. It's the single most effective activity to get a young person ready for life. And you can even take that a step further because of looking at all the myriad of honors and different activities we, can, we, uh, we do as Pathfinders. I've seen younger Pathfinders gain interest and appreciation for things that they never would be even have thought of without being in Pathfinders and experiencing it. Yeah, it opens your mind. Oh. What about you, Stefan? Um, I have a lot of things that I would say. Uh, I, I would say that with Pathfinders, Personally, and it uh, might be a little controversial. I think it's the most effective abdomen tool that we have. For okay, well, yeah, um, but yeah, I was saying I'm always been very controversial about AY and Pathfinder and how I think they should continue to be connected because, like I was saying, I feel like we're fight AY fights for the same youth that Pathfinders is trying to get, and I know Pathfinders and AY are a little bit different, but we used to call them AY honors. <laughs> and I feel like they shouldn't be separate. They're trying to be separate but equal, but even in small churches, the big churches, they're not equal. They're usually fighting for the same budget. They usually overlap and I think that does harm to kids. And make it, make it a little distinction that maybe kids having a little bit more fun in AY and they're always, you know how we used to have friends. They're like, why are you in Pathfinder? Why are you wearing that uniform? I think that is an unnecessary decision but um like i was saying for youth and how it affects them i coach girls basketball at oakwood academy and half the girls i have are in my actual club that i'm the deputy director of and the stuff that i would teach them in pathfinders trickles over to what they do in basketball and it made the team that much better because they understand discipline they understand paying attention time management 
all types of things that Pathfinders will teach you that you might not necessarily get anywhere else other than maybe an organized team sport because there's a difference between what you learn at home, what you learn in the classroom, what you learn at, you know, organized sports and what you learn at Pathfinders, but they all can be connected if, you know, and they're all, they're all actually brought together in Pathfinders because you, you have honors that help you at a home, whether it's cooking and learning how to wash clothes and different things like that, like your home economics type of stuff. They teach you the God thing. They teach you how to have proper worship. It's just, I think Pathfinder is just such a holistic thing that for youth, I believe it is the most effective tool for for teaching kids. And I think it's the most effective tool we have and add to them for you. When I had joined Pathfinders, I had like one of the uh, things I always cherish from Pathfinders would be that before I would have, I did not have that much confidence in talking in front of people. And now it's a piece of cake. Because Brother Jackson used to force me to talk give presentations even when I didn't want to. <laughs> he would make me go up there. At first it was terrifying, but then you get the hang of it after a while. And then Angie also assigned me more things. So if it really was, if it wasn't for Brother Jackson and Angie assigning me to do all of these things off of the to-do list and to make me give presentations, I probably wouldn't have gained confidence to do it for when I did it at my job or even when I just did it at a, a small small presentation in school. But it, it made it much easier to go up there and stand in front of people I don't know when I do it in front of people I do know and be way more people, even in yeah. honor. <laughs> yeah, and it, it also helps you to um, understand kind of chain of command and yeah. respect for authority because I, I see a lot of people in the workplace that they have to rail against every authority any instruction they're given they have to question it they have to you know they have a problem with it and it's like you know you're getting paid just do what they tell you to do i mean once it's not uh immoral or illegal but i'm saying like hey, I need you to, you know, stay back an extra hour to get this done. Oh, why? I have things to do, blah. I had a long day. Like, you, you get these people where they just complain a lot. But as a pathfinder, when all you do is get instructions all day long that you yeah. have to follow, you kind of get used to um, chain of command. If, if you even look really at uh, many churches, which I have, you'll find that the ones that do everything and help out everywhere are the ones who are leading Pathfinder clubs. Um, you'll, you'll, you'll notice that Pathfinder director is not just the Pathfinder director for many churches. They're also the elder. They're also the clerk. They're also uh, yeah. head deacon. They're also Sabbath school teacher. Like they will, they, they know the importance of serving God. They were, it's been yeah. instilled from such a young age that it, not to say that they don't know how to say no. It's just that they know how to manage many hats and many responsibilities because they've learned it all in Pathfinder. So, I mean, yeah. in the workplace, they can do it. Uh, you'll find former, you'll find area coordinators are teachers, uh, supervisors, and things like that. And then people will be like, well, how come they can do all the, yeah, it's, it's Pathfinder. Uh, I can I definitely agree with that because when I was at Oakwood Academy, I coached two basketball teams, a softball team, I taught art, <laughs> I was an assistant AD. Like it was a lot of things that I did and I managed it with and then just doing my normal path on her duty. It was it's definitely something that I realized. I think this is the this, this last two years was probably the first year I realized how much I could do because of Pathfinders and, and because of what I learned at from Miss Walker at City Temple and all that. So it was just, I completely agree with that. That's why I think 
that's why I said I think it's the most effective tool we have for Adventist youth in general. And it's just sad to see that some big churches don't care or they don't want to. And um, it, it's just, it's, it's a strange thing how, to me, how Pathfinders is so effective, but people don't want to do it. It, that's that is the most strange. That's the strangest thing to me at Adventist Church is that we have this amazing th thing that's better than ROTC, better than Scouts, better than any of these other youth groups that we might have, and we don't want to use it as as that. We want to put people in here who think they're Pathfinder people in charge, but they're not. And it's like, is that's a different type of person. Like my dad would tell me in football, to be a linebacker, you had to be a different guy. To be a pathfinder person, you have to be a different person. Like you have to, you have to want to be a leader. You have to want to love kids. You have to like have this innate ability to want to serve. And, and we really breed people that are servants of God and literally a friend to man, like we say. So it's like mm -hmm. I don't understand why we don't have more. I guess, gold standard clubs around where we have so many big churches all over the country and all over the world. And Oshkosh, you really see that. Like, I've never felt, I know Oshkosh, you got your bad eggs, you might hear somebody steal something, but I have never felt as at home as I have been when I was at Oshkosh with all these path parties. I think one thing we also have to acknowledge is as pathfinders, we kind of sent our lives around church and church events and yeah that's true and a lot of people who didn't grow up in pathfinders they centered their life around themselves right. and what they like to do so the minute you come and you say hey i need you to help with pathfinders and they're like all right i could help but then they find out that <laughs> pathfinders have something going on nearly every weekend or every <laughs> other weekend and you always out this type of thing it dis it discourages people who are accustomed to be a little bit more self focused and you know relax at home and chill and just do what they feel like doing for themselves. Um, pathfinders, it, it, you just have to be significantly more selfless and be about the young people and about the ministry. And it, once you're in it, it becomes part of you. And then it's hard to understand why other people aren't doing it, kind of like what you were saying. But if you yeah. kind of step out of it, you realize it's inconvenient. If your life isn't <laughs> around that, it's very inconvenient for parents and, 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 and church members. I can't fault them at all. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's funny that you said it, that, though. It's definitely, it's definitely a commitment on both the part of those who are involved and the parents that are bringing their children into the program yep yeah i actually tell um during staff meetings or like parent meetings i tell the parents that this is not a babysitting service and if your kid is here they have to work and when they work that means you have to work too and i tell them honestly if you cannot commit to that then I don't want you bringing your kids here to waste your time and then because it is a commitment. Like you are, you're trying to establish a lifestyle. Like pathfindering the laws and the pledge isn't just something that you just do or say like the Scott, Scouts pledge and whatever. It's not just something you say. Even they have to live by their thing. And the same thing is we're trying to establish people for the kingdom. And if you don't, if you can't do that, then I don't think this is the place for you know to be a part of that camping and trying to put money towards things. I'm like, there's other ways you can. Not saying that pathfinding is the only thing you could do, but it is. It does hurt everybody else when everybody doesn't pull up because I've seen clubs have 30 kids and then next week they have 10. But we plan yeah. for 30 for something. I say we don't want to inconvenience you. You don't want to inconvenience us. You don't want to get all these emails and you're upset. You don't want to feel obligated to do something. I say, I want you here if you want to be here. Like, I didn't join Pathfinder because my friends did. Like, honestly, most of my friends did not join Pathfinder until after I joined. So it's, it's something that I think is special 
and it, it is a sacred thing. And I felt like that with the Pathfinder parents, you know, I feel like that those who are consistent really appreciate that, even though it's hard initially. And then they, because I have a lot of people say, man, you know, my kid is this, my kid is that. I have a lot of parents this last year just said, from the girls I coached and the girls I was a Pathfinder, like, man, their grades are going up. What did you do? I'm like, I didn't tell them anything. I just told them, if you don't get your grades up, you can't do this. Simple as that. And I follow through with it. So it's nothing special that I feel like there's nothing too special that we're all saying. It's just the fact that we're there and that we're being a good example. We don't have any, you know, special water we're giving the kids at Pathfinders, you know. I just feel right. like we're just doing our job and those who are in service who've been in Pathfinders. Because I'm young. I'm 29 years old and I've been a Pathfinder for 20 years. That's, that says a lot. Like, I look at some people like, how long you been in here? And they like 50. Well, I've been here the last 10 years. I'm like, yo, I got 10 years on you. But <laughs> it still doesn't matter no matter when you come in, you know, what's up, like, Wiss is an inactive Pathfinder. Man, no, he's a Pathfinder. He just don't wear the uniform as, we, as much as we do. It's just, and you can see it in how people's lifestyle is. Those who are former or inactive, they still follow that same line. They still understand. And I have people in church come and saying, hey, the uniform's off, and they just wear a dress or something. And I'm like, oh. They're like, yeah, when I was your age, we couldn't wear it that way. You need to put that on properly. I'm like, you got it. But it stays with people forever. And I think, I think it's the most special thing we have in Adventism that, it's it's something I know I will do forever, and I would love for my kids to do it. You know, it, it's something that uh, but I don't think people should force their kids into something. That's one thing I hate seeing. I think it's no it's, force them. Just let, let them go. And, uh, it's it's definitely the 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 mentality. I think this is yeah. what caught it, it, it. It's all about it's if if like you said if if the parent is thinking it's a babysitting club. Or they're thinking, oh man, this is an every week and thing, I, and you know, I just got the weekend off from work. But if they're thinking differently, their mentality is like, you know, just like people don't like college, but they're right. like, no, I gotta finish so I can get the diploma. So it's like, if their mentality <laughs> is like, I'm bringing my son or my daughter here every Saturday or Sunday morning, not because I, it's something I have to do. It's I'm wanting them to grow and become a servant and closer to Christ. And if they're thinking that, I mean, that's when it changes because I, Hey man, I, I've been stuck at a, I've been stuck at church waiting for a parent for four hours. Oh, man. That's what, that's a story that happened to me. I mean, it, 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 I was made the babysitter. So yeah. even though I, we told them it's not a babysitter, it was like, uh, you know, I know they're at church. Uh, I can I can do this errand and that errand and next thing yeah, you know. Yeah, they just think it's a safe haven. It's like, oh, they, they'll be there. Like, no, that's not how it works. Yeah. So. But you you know, one thing you said is mentality. And I've actually asked a parent this, the same kid. I was like, when you send your kid to a sports activity, what do you send them to that coach for? And they said to get better. And I said, that's the same thing with Pat Fun. Like, you want them to get better. You have a – a village that raises your child just as if you have a coach that you trust will make your child a better athlete. And me being a coach and a pathfinder director is the same job to me. Only difference is I might I I emphasize more holistic lifestyle and then than I do in the sports world. But it's the same thing and that's one thing I hate when I see like, oh it's just drop them off and then an hour later, I go up to the school and that same child is late for practice. I'm like, how? Like, you're a pathfinder. You just seen me. You should bring them to You should be in practice. And I tell them, like, you know what to do. So it's just, I think if we can switch the mentality of some of these parents and make them understand that this is a growing tool and not a babysitting tool, I think we'll have a lot more people in the club. Instead. And then you got to change the mentality of the kid. And I think... Uh, one thing that a lot of directors should do is make it more fun, not necessarily all but work, but show them that Pathfinders is worth it. Because uh, I've seen a lot of kids in this generation that, I mean, just the last few camp meetings we went to, we didn't even have nearly as many Pathfinders as we had when me and you, me and you Winston, were there. Mm -hmm. We used to have the whole campground field where we had to literally move the campsite to a different area because we didn't have enough room for the Pathfinder. Exactly. Now we got now we got too much room. You know what I'm saying? Like, 
that it is I think the generation of kids they don't take the same pride all everywhere, even down here in Pathfinders as you know some of the older generation has taught us, and I think we have to change that mentality as well make it, make them know it's worth it because there's too many tools of distraction out here, too many sports they can get into too many other things that are not of God honestly man i think I think phones have a big part to play with oh, yeah, the decline of pathfinder. It's that's nuts. Definitely. When like when I think and I look at what has changed, that one device has just warped so many young people. Um their yeah. sen- their sense of fun is different. Right? Yeah. Like for us growing up, we used to enjoy just getting away from our parents, being with our friends <laughs> outside, you know, right. just doing stuff that you can't do at home. With them, yeah. when they're in the club or in any meeting or you go camping, it's like they're on a, they're, they're having a withdrawal of not having the phone with them. So they're sad and they're mopey and they can't even explain why. But if you yeah. think about it, it's really like they, they, they're in withdrawal from this device. And man, it's, it's sad because they have that all day, every day during the week, right? And then we right. get them for like, what, one hour, two hours, three hours for the weekend. <laughs> it's very hard to institute change when you fight fighting against something that systemic, you know. That is true. That's, that is very true. I didn't even think about it like that, but yeah, you're completely right. Now that I'm thinking about it, it is hard to get these phones. I take somebody's phone away and pass on the club, they're about to be ready to swing on me. Oh yeah, oh yeah. It's it's a it's a it's an addiction, bro. It's an addiction. Like they for real, like get like a addict, like a crack addict. You take their phone, their <laughs> knees, their legs start twitching, their hands start rubbing together, they start scratching their neck, like just <laughs> they just like, come on, man, let me get my phone back, man. Yeah, 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 for real. This that is true. Always like this. My- Even more than half this generation that I am a part of, sadly, lacks respect and discipline, (laughs) though. And then, like, some of it, I'm sorry, somebody might get mad, but some of it fall on the parents. They don't want to whoop the kid. They don't want to discipline the kid. So then the kid is going to be like, oh, I can do whatever I want. I can say whatever I want to whoever I want. It's like, all right, but you're going to learn a lesson the hard way that you ain't supposed to be doing that because nobody Mm -hmm. else is teaching you not to do this. But you know what, Kayla, when you say that, I don't think we have enough people like in in to lead this generation like we had in Angie or Brother Jay or, you know, some of these guys we had growing up because even though we did have cell phones, we didn't use it as much because of course we grew up like in the nineties when there wasn't a cell phone, we were actually outside drinking from the water hose and all this other stuff. Mm-hmm, I mm-hmm. think we don't have enough We don't have enough leaders that know or understand or want to understand the kids of this upcoming generation. So we don't know how to relate. And a lot of that, you know, I feel like those who do understand that and those who can lead, I think some of the older generation doesn't like that. And they feel threatened as well. So I know that happened to me. And it makes it kind of difficult, but there are the few people, and, and then they give up. Like people my age should be the ones that are leading this new generation, and even younger, like your age, Caitlin, that should be leading this new generation. But there might been that Adventist hurt syndrome that we have, or somebody doesn't want to give us a leadership, so we quit and go do something else. But there isn't enough new blood. There's not enough Angies of the world. There's not enough those people that can actually and reach back and tell them, hey, there's something beyond your phone. Like, this is fun. You know, everybody, like, for instance, camp meeting. This, the last camp meeting I went to, I, I have never seen so many kids wear so many crispy, clean clothes in my life at camp meeting, trying to be fresh. And I'm like, dude, this is Camp Wagner. You need to go out here and run. You need to go out here and wear the worst shoes you got. You need to be out here in sweatpants and T-shirts, rolling your sleeves up like this. Like, don't come out here like you're about to go to the mall. Like, and like, when the people were you working with? And they join us. I'm like, dude, we about to pick up trash. Right. And then get mad. And then get mad when they picking up trash. So it's like, 
we don't have enough people that lead out in any conference, especially the black conferences, because we don't see that problem if we go to El Sabo or Camp Palakwa. We don't see that issue. There's youth out there, they're playing the guitar, having a bonfire, but we our campgrounds is nothing but older people and youth that are upset that they're there. Not enough pathfinders, not enough leaders, and I think that's a huge issue. And if we can find those people and just bring them back and say that, hey, we have your back, I think we wouldn't have as much of an issue. It won't fix it totally, but we wouldn't have a dead. We wouldn't have dead churches all over Detroit and Chicago and all these other cities. Yeah, I want to comment on that because uh, what happens when you to be one of those kind of leaders, you have to really know your young people. And what happens is you become one of those elders or youth leaders that is always hanging around the kids. Yeah, and what will, and what will happen is those older leaders, like you said, will start looking at that. You know, and I've had these conversations with other youth leaders like myself who we get criticized. We, they're, we're like, they're like, why are you always around the kids? Why are you always having conversations? And how come you can laugh with them and joke with them? It's like, yeah, because I understand their language. How do you, how can you talk with them? Well, because I go on social media and I read and I Google and I know what those, the stuff they like. And so, and then they're like, well, how can, it's like, well, yeah, you have to be, the word I use, intentional. You have to be intentional. You have to be saying, listen, I want to be a youth leader. I want to bring these young people to Christ. So how right. am I going to do that? By having a relationship with them. You have to. That's the only it, way you can do it. Information without a relationship is intimidation. So I'm not exactly. going to give them first because no one's going to care about what you have to say until you show that you care. Exactly. And that, that was one of the issues I had um, being down here coaching and all that stuff that they were like, why your team, why your team love you so much? Like, because I hang out with them, I talk to them. I un they understand boundaries. They understand what I'm saying to them. Like you said, I'm giving them the actual information. I'm encouraging them. And guess what? We won the championship and every other team did. So I'm like, it's not about I feel like I'm no more. I know better than you, is that I care more. I actually want to give them the information. And the way that information was given to us when we were younger is not the same way that information is given to them now. They can literally research what you're talking about as you're talking about. It. Like, all we had to do was take it. We're like, oh, for real? And then we might find out two days later that it wasn't true. But now they be like, oh, for real, Mr. Waste? Okay, well, what does this say? I have to give them, they, they want to be real, you know, they want to understand what's going on. They want to know about different things. So these older people, I feel like, don't understand, like you're saying, they don't want to understand. And honestly, I think a lot of them are just tired and they're, they're used to what they're used to having a position. And as soon as they don't have a position, they're upset about it and feel like, oh, you're pushing me out. You don't need me anymore. No, it's not that we don't need you anymore. It's that you're tired, and this is a gener different generation, and you have to understand that things evolve. I was, and I told them, um, I told some older people that were like 70 years old, I was like, look, when you was 20 years old, what was the world like? When you was 30 years old, what was the world like? When I was born, what was the world like? You have to adapt. You, know, you can't do the same thing. 20 years from now, we might not be having Zoom conversations. We might be doing that old Star Wars stuff. You know, we might actually have holograms. We don't know. But we have to learn how to use that technology. Just mm -hmm. like we have to learn these kids. These kids were born in the year 2000. Like, come on, man. They don't know what the 90s sound like. They don't know what it smells like. They don't understand the green uniforms. They don't understand those type of things. They want to know what's new. And they're looking at ahead just like we were, too. In 2000, I was looking ahead to 2020. So you don't think they're looking up to 2040? They want to know what's going on. And if we're going to do spread the message to all the world in this generation, that means the generation that we're supposed to be preaching to currently, which means it always ever changing. And I don't think we understand our own tenets sometimes. And that's why we have, that's why we have the problem. We have dead churches, no pathfinders, AY and pathfinders still fighting. Elders still talking about, we don't know what we're talking about. Like, you don't know what you're talking about right now. We have to educate each other. And mm -hmm. 
there's nothing wrong with understanding the old ways things were done because the old ways sometimes are right. You have to take what's old and create new. You know, you think they still take the old blueprints from cars and don't upgrade it? No, they have to do it every year. So we have to do the same thing every year. There's always a new kid that we have in Pathfinder. There's always something new. And until we realize that, we're going to be having this conversation next year. Well, I just wanted to say I think I appreciate you guys and your input. And I'm glad people are actually going to be able to hear y'all when this go up on YouTube tomorrow. <laughs> Hey, man, look, I'm going to tell people on YouTube, hey, don't mind my hair, bro. Look, I'll be okay. <laughs> I'll get it fixed for y'all. <laughs> okay, well, thank you guys for doing this for me. And... No problem, man. <laughs> Anytime. Anytime. It fun. Yeah, man, everybody here, real, man. I like you guys. I don't know about you, Winston, because you in a dungeon somewhere. And you got to fix that. <laughs> but I, I was here. <laughs> I respect everybody here. I see that we're all on the same Wayne Lake, and I like to see people that are like minded and pathfinding, man. We really need it. And before before we finish off, just one other thing I wanted to mention too. Another thing that we have to look at is going into our churches as opposed to the congregation and looking for resources to help within the club. Now, as I as was stated, I'm not a quote-unquote active pathfinder, <laughs> but I do use when I'm called upon my resources and stuff to help out my pathfinder club. For, That's for, you're a legend, bro. <laughs> <laughs> for example, I'm a musician, so most of the time our pathfinder director will call me and ask me about okay, we need to get some new drum sets or um, some new drum heads or a new drum case for the drums. Can you come maybe Friday night or uh, Saturday afternoon, measure out the drums, talk to your people, your connect for where you go and get all your music stuff and see if you can get us a deal. And I'm really like, yeah, sure, I can do that. So it's also, it's also getting the church congregation involved with the Pathfinder community as well and using those resources to further and enrich the Pathfinder Club. Yeah, that's true. There you go. Right. Well, once again, thank you guys. <laughs> For sure. No a better group. So. When are we going to do this again, man? <laughs> yeah, let me know. Yeah, we yeah, might have a next time. Where we maybe, all maybe, maybe on my podcast. Right, hey, hey, I'm okay with that. Wherever we can down. get this message out, however we can get the message out. <laughs> for real. Okay, well, for you guys watching, thank you for tuning in for another video. And we'll be back next week. And yeah, so don't forget to tune in Saturday for the church service. And I guess we'll see you guys later. Mm -hmm.